Burnout is crossing a threshold. The movement past capacity. The manifestation of feelings of being overwhelmed and building up over time. When there's nothing more that you have to give to the world, I think. Sort of all of the stress that needed an outlet gets downloaded into your body physically. Feeling like you did nothing, nothing even if you're working every waking moment. And there's never a point when you feel satisfied with your efforts. When you're just going through what you're supposed to be doing and you're not feeling the joy anymore. Trying to hang in there for as long as you can and you've just exhausted every single coping skill you have. Rather than operating in a state of flow with the situations around you, I felt like burnout stems from like forcing and is usually driven by a lot of self-defeating kind of beliefs that force you to push yourself beyond what you're actually capable of. Being exhausted with good intentions, and it happens to a lot of people who work really hard or put a lot of themselves into what they do. At first, you have a goal, and you lose sight of what you want to do to begin with. And burnout is at that point where you have lost that original idea and that original spark. Burnout is actually the thing right now. I'm just like completely exhausted. Rest doesn't even feel restful. The thing that you feel after a hard day's work, mentally and physically. All my body pains are worse, just get worse. I feel old. Heavy and disconnected. At the end of the day, you're just like, oh, the dogs are barking. It feels like your feet just hurt so much. My arms, my legs, my feet. I don't want to lift nothing, nothing, nothing. Not even a spoon. For me, it's when I don't feel creative. I get restless. I'm incapacitated in a way. Burnout is just where you feel frazzled. Sad. Stunted. Drained. Feeling dirty. Burning eyes. Grinding in my teeth. Not feeling comfortable. Bringing in the ears. Or I'll overeat of junk food. You're gonna pass out. By the end of my work day, I find that my shoulders are somewhat up near my ears. I actually experience chronic headaches, and then I get anxiety <laughs> about getting headaches. Thoughts and images like spinning around me, you know. Picture your worst self in your head, not caring anymore. Uh, it's not necessarily physical for me. It's a very cerebral process. I see it in myself, and I see it in others. And I tend to respond and to react. Quickly to stress this as opposed to perhaps letting them go. I think we all can see it in our fuses get short. And that's something that I've learned to look out for in people is like, is someone responding to me in a particular way because what I'm doing is wrong? Or is it just that they are so at the end of their rope and so concerned with their own, you know, survival and just like the continuation of their own being that they're going to lash out for the sake of self-preservation? more introverted just because my, my energy is becoming too good. So it's like I don't want to talk or see people or communicate with them. So it's like I go and do my own cocoonness. I guess I can't interact very well. I just want silence. You know, I don't want to talk. <laughs> I don't want to talk at all. I kind of become less myself in terms of being able to articulate or be generous in a lot of ways, it kind of eats, it eats at you, it makes it difficult to do that. Seemingly not having time to spare, to spare on, on you themselves. So. Because you don't have anything to, to give and like anything could start to feel like a demand. I usually get mean when I'm approaching the burnout shortness. Yeah, be sometimes like resentful, you know, when I feel like I'm doing a lot. I'm very good at pretending that I like to pretend it's awesome, wonderful, happy. Pretending is joyful these days. I'm about to start crying now because I'm thinking about it. Those feelings inside, or at least, you know, keeping them at bay, then furthers the, the, the effect of burnout. The effort that you have to put in to sustain yourself while holding back the effects of burnout causes more burnout. <laughs> You can feel it. You don't want to be around someone that's burnt out. It burns you up.
When they talk about how they need to rest, but in the same sentence talk about the hundred things they're going to do in that day. I think it looks like a lack of stability, like there's not a calm center. It's either manic or, or like shut down. It was also this very kind of mindless glare. Not being able to see an end in sight, I think, makes it harder. harder. Trying to find that end point, thinking, well, is this ever going to end? It's hard to imagine not feeling burnt out at some point. Step one is realizing it's happening at all. Step two is reconciling yourself with the fact that it's a thing that requires treatment. Like, you can't just push through it because you've already reached the end. The third step would be implementing tactics. So I think a lot of what's true about burnout, it's not just about your energy level, it's also about like your general enjoyment and your passion for what you're doing. Something that I like to do is just to make sure I have little things, like planning days where I see friends and family and just having things to look forward to. So I'm not constantly trying to work and work and work push myself. Try to systematically calm yourself down. Take a hot shower. Self-care. Really good food. Helps. A good meal. A couple good meals. Pet your cat. Uh, to go home. And smell my flowers. To relax your breathing. To just let go of any tension in your body. To let go of any tension in your mind. There's some kind of sigh of relief also. When you name that you've reached capacity, like, there's this, there is a bit of a, like, a catharsis in saying, wait a sec, I think I'm burnt out. Right now. But we live in a society that continually keeps us in this state of fear, of anxiety, of uncertainty. Because we always push and push and push and we always have to be busy and we always have to be doing things and place a lot of value on that. To value the human ability to perform labor more than the intrinsic value of the ability to be human. It's okay if you're not doing 150%. You know, resigning yourself to maybe not being as productive as you would want to be. Not using the effects of productivity as a band-aid for what else is missing. Productivity is a sickness. We're all in this together. You can do so much, but you can only do so much. So much, so much, so much.